What's going on everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic today. Now today, I'm going to go ahead and take a little break from the day-to-day -day rants and go ahead and say something a little positive when it comes to Battlefield 2042 and the developers over at DICE. Yes, there's been a lot of things I've been ranting about recently, but one thing that I've noticed, and I've noticed tremendously, is the change of cosmetics when it comes to Battlefield 2042. When this game officially first dropped, I was extremely scared for the future. I mean, between the specialists, you know, the voice lines on the specialists, the leaked skins that we saw that were going to be coming out into the game, and then also one of the skins coming out already to confirm that all the leaked skins were actually going to be coming into the production of Battlefield 2042. With all of this crap happening, I gotta say, it got me a little worried about the direction that the developers were going to take. But for those who don't know, EA went ahead and hired a ton of goats when it comes to the development of the Battlefield franchise, one of those individuals being Marcus Leto. Again, I don't know if I'm mispronouncing his last name, I do apologize, someone correct me in the comment section if I'm going ahead and butchering his last name. But for anybody who doesn't know Marcus, he is one of the masterminds behind the Halo universe. So. Yes, he knows a thing or two when it comes to the vibes that these games should be holding. Now, when I first saw him introduced into the whole franchise, I noticed over on Twitter he would like a ton of tweets, you know, repost certain things, all revolving around the experience, the atmosphere Battlefield 2042 has to offer. Everybody's saying the specialist lines are too corny. The game isn't nitty and gritty enough. It doesn't feel like actual war. All of these types of posts, Marcus was going ahead, liking, retweeting, and putting all of his focus onto that. Now, I made a couple of videos about this in the past, and I was, you know, told all throughout the comment section that don't get my hype up, you know, he's probably just doing it for marketing, you know, to get people hyped for the next Battlefield game, which, honestly, I can completely understand where you guys are coming from, especially being screwed over by DICE so many times in a row, you know, I want to be shocked if this was a marketing scheme, but I gotta say... It seems like Marcus 110% understands the vibes that we want out of the Battlefield franchise. Now, I don't expect any massive changes when it comes to Battlefield 2042. The game is already made, you know, the foundation was already cooked up, the game's already out there. My main focus for him is with the next Battlefield title. But, 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 still, when it comes to Battlefield 2042, I gotta say, I can see his imprint on this game already happening. Now, like I said just a little bit earlier, I know you guys remember when they released, you know, the McKay skin that had the cowboy hat and all that stuff on. Everybody was calling him Woody and the Santa skins and all this nonsense. I know we all remember this time, and that is when the community retaliated the most. And that is also the same time that the leaked skin came out, which proved that the rest of the list was probably going to come out shortly after. So again, like I said, the community was completely outraged. But after this outrage, which, again, Marcus was already a part of the team by now, the whole game took a drastic change. This was also around the time, you know, the specialist was nonstop being talked about. You know, the, the community was really pissed around this time. And from this point on, every single weekly mission looked better and better and better. Skins that were vibrant enough that made you want to grind for them and put them on your weapon, but they weren't so bland that it's completely pointless. I mean, in the past, there were some weeks that I just completely skipped the weekly challenge. There was no incentive at all, in my opinion, to go ahead and grind for it. But in the last weeks before Season 1 launched, I gotta say, what they gave us, all the rewards, were looking amazing compared to what we got in the past. And then, Season 1 dropped. All the specialist lines were completely removed from, you know, Breakthrough, Conquest, all that stuff, so no longer are we hearing the end of the game corny phrases right now. And the full battle pass is stuffed with nothing but fantastic looking cosmetics. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was completely worried that this was either going to go one of two ways. Either they're going to make it completely bland and make every single skin look like just a black plain skin or, you know, a plain blue skin, plain colors. Or it was going to be overly flashy to the point where it's turning into Call of Duty with all of these anime skins and all these over the top skins that just don't suit the game that we all want from the Battlefield franchise. Surprising enough, it's right smack dab in the middle. Something that me personally never thought could be done. I, I gotta say, I am incredibly proud and impressed by DICE's work when it comes to the cosmetic changes that are going on within Battlefield 2042. This game literally went from possibly the most cartoonish ideas ever to becoming one of the most hardcore military shooters. And it's so hard to look at this game because I know what this game was from launch. I know behind the cosmetics, it's the same corny ass specialists 
But the changes that they did to the atmosphere of the game were, like, I can't lie to you guys. You know, I never lie on this channel. Regardless if it goes against my previous words, it is what it is. They changed something, they fixed something, so I have to give them praise for it. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. This right here is the first time I've ever wanted to willingly grind through a battle pass with my own time. Every other time that I go ahead and grind through a battle pass, it's for content. Whether it's to make a YouTube video about the season pass, or the battle pass that came out in the game, or to go ahead and stream it. You know, whatever I want to do, it's for content purposes. But this is the first time that I ever actually sat down and wanted to play through a battle pass with my own time. As in off hours, off stream, not recording content, not talking about anything, just me wanting to hop on the game to go ahead and grind the battle pass. Every single battle pass I've ever grinded, besides Halo Infinite, I gotta be honest, Halo Infinite is pretty darn good, but the problem with their battle pass is is it takes way too long to go ahead and grind through. I mean, it just, it literally requires way too many hours to actually get what you want out of that battle pass. So, I kind of push that one aside. But through the battle passes I can actually obtain, they always seem like they stuff the worst, most low-end content into them. You know, the store gets the most high-quality stuff. The best artwork that their art team can work for, that goes in the store. You have to pay premium prices for that stuff. And then obviously all the scraps, the worst of the worst ideas, get thrown into the battle pass and you pay 10 bucks and you can grind through it with your own time. That's how I always saw the battle passes. But Battlefield 2042, I want to get the stuff. The stuff in the battle pass is better than the stuff in the store. They have like this ghost looking skin, like something from Modern Warfare 2 or something like that. I don't care for it. I don't like it. I, I legitimately do not like it. Everything I've gotten in the weekly challenges and everything I have obtained in the battle pass has made me 10 times happier than anything in the store right now. And I gotta say, I really appreciate that. Not only as a Battlefield fan, but as a FPS and video game fan in general, it's nice to see a battle pass actually produce good content. They just have to go ahead and remove the fillers that they're trying to stuff in there. If they can go ahead and remove the fillers and add more genuine content into the battle passes in the future, this could be a good model. It could be a good design. Now, I do have one problem, though. One singular problem, and that is, will they keep this vibe going for the next Battlefield game? You know, they did the exact same thing with Battlefield 5, and that's what makes me worry about the next Battlefield game. They made Battlefield 5 into the most, you know, absurd-looking World War II game you could ever think of within the first trailer. The community retaliated. They changed the game after launch. Here comes Battlefield 2042. We went through the same exact cycle. They go ahead, give us the corniest specialist, the craziest-looking skins at launch. The community retaliates. They go ahead and strip it from the game. Who's to say they're not going to continue the same exact process? Now... I'm just going to keep my hopes high that the atmosphere will stay better because I think that Marcus is truly putting an insane impact on the Battlefield franchise right now. I think him alone is the reason for the direction in all the cosmetics, all the vibes, the removal of the voices and stuff like that. All of this stuff is because of him. I guarantee it. And if that's the case, then the next Battlefield game might actually be pretty nitty gritty and hardcore. And if it is, that's exactly what I want. And I think a lot of you guys in the community want as well. I think a lot of the Battlefield community, when they saw Battlefield 2042, they were expecting either a modern day, near futuristic, obviously, Battlefield experience, military vibes, hardcore, nitty gritty, putting you into the absolute shit. That's why people enjoyed Battlefield 1, you know? Battlefield 1 was rough because it was World War 1. You know, it didn't have any crazy guns. It was like the oldest technology you could possibly have. But the experience, the environment, the screams of the soldiers, the atmosphere of the whole overall game is what made it so great. We need that. That's, that's so stupidly crucial in Battlefield because Battlefield isn't a competitive FPS shooter, right guys? I think we can all agree on that. Nobody hops on Battlefield to just, you know, absolutely win dubs 24-7. I mean, obviously you want to win, as in any FPS game. But it's not like COD where we're sitting here sweating our balls off, right? A lot of us who hop on Battlefield hop on casually. That's the fun of Battlefield. You can hop into this massive sandbox. You can get in a tank, a helicopter, a, a bolt for all I care. Just run around as infantry, play as a medic, a support player. There's so many things you can do on Battlefield. And it gives a casual vibe. Nobody wants this to turn into, you know, a high skill-based matchmaking competitive experience. Nobody cares about that. So the atmosphere of the environments that we play in are extremely crucial. Almost just as crucial as the gameplay itself when it comes to a Battlefield game. But ladies and gentlemen, do me a massive favor. Go down in the comment section and let me know if you guys already started on the Battle Pass, if you tried out the Battle Pass, or if you still haven't even gone into Battlefield 2042 in general. I'm just curious of what the mass majority of you guys think of new cosmetics coming into Battlefield 2042. I enjoy them. I think they're good. They remind me of Battlefield 4. You know, simplistic 
clean. You know, I would put them on my weapon personally. They look fantastic, but they're not over the top to where it looks like it's unicorns and crap flying around everywhere in Battlefield. We are getting the vibes that we asked for in the beginning. I truly think if they can transfer this over to the next game, minus, minus the specialists, it could be some good changes. But, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like. If you hate it, leave a dislike. Also, if you're brand new and enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. Also, if you want to chat me the stories, do so have Twitter and Discord. Put the link down in the description. And also, if you want to catch me live streams of video games, do it on Twitch. Link that in the description as well. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. See you all next one. Peace out.